So we can see those things, but the key thing is we want to see what types of clouds uh, will um, have the likelihood that a tornado can happen. Because you can never exactly predict the tornado. You say, well, one is a likely out of this particular cloud. And then they said, uh, you know, they send off sirens and bells and say, I get in safe places. Now, what actually causes a tornado? So this is the fascinating thing that I was learning as I was preparing this. All right, so first of all, it happens in a supercell thunderstorm. So you have to have a supercell thunderstorm, which we learned about earlier. Then you have these updrafts. They interact with horizontal winds. So let's think about this. You've got an updraft. It's a draft going up. Horizontal winds is winds going this way. So we have winds going in opposite directions, okay? And then you've also, actually, usually you get winds kind of going this way, and sometimes, you know, you get, you get winds, uh, when I say updrafts, it's usually not straight up, because it's kind of at an angle, because usually a storm is moving off in a particular direction because of the winds. And this can cause the wind to begin to rotate. Um, and the rotating air, by the way, is called the mesocycle. I'll show some pictures in a minute. And then we get a counterclockwise. By the way, that's just in the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere, it's, uh, it's uh, by the way, the counterclockwise viewed from above in the northern hemisphere, and it would be uh, clockwise in the southern hemisphere viewed from above. Um, circulation that develops in a supercell. It may evolve into a thunderstorm. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, pictorially. So here we have um, the horizontal winds in red right here, right there. And then we um, have the updraft, and that starts, causes this to begin to swirl, as you can see. And then it is the, uh, this is like, you know, picture one, you know, time one. And then the second thing that's going to start happening is we start getting um, some motion this way. We can start seeing this swirling mass. This is this mesocycle, meso. And then if it starts to continue to rotate, what actually happens is it starts to narrow. Usually it starts out really wide and then it starts to narrow and as it narrows it's the speeds of the winds pick up and boom you can make the tornado down here you see so you can get this narrow band starts to rotate and then you get excitement so the rotating cloud becomes narrower like I said the wind speed increases now if you have a mesocycle about 60% of the time you're gonna make a tornado the other 40% doesn't make a tornado all right Here's kind of an interesting little thing with the birth of a tornado. This is kind of the sort of a little like a uh, poem. Let's do a poem. Oh, quite. Winds going up. Winds going down. Winds coming together. Winds going round and round. Put them all together. And believe me, mister, you got a mean old twister. <laughs> there you go. All right, so that's kind of how a tornado goes. Winds going up, as we talked about. Winds going down. Winds coming together. Winds going round and round. Put them all together and believe me, Mr. Get a Wheel Twister. This supercell thunderstorm simulation was seeded with pre-storm conditions that produced an actual F4 tornado in Manchester, South Dakota. As we look inside the storm, Stream tubes colored by vertical velocity represent the motion of particles released into the airflow. Spheres in the low pressure vortex represent the developing tornado. Sinking blue stream tubes within a cool downdraft fuel the intensity of the tornado. Warm moist air feeds the storm from the east and rise sharply upward from the surface. Tilting cones colored by temperature represent the wind speed and direction at the surface and show the interaction of warm and cold air. A counter-rotating satellite tornado also evolves, a phenomena rarely observed in nature. This visualization represents one hour of storm evolution. Atmospheric scientists are evolving the complexity of their simulations in an effort to better understand and predict severe weather. What's some uh, safety hints about tornadoes? What should you do? Seek shelter. That's the key thing. Go to your basement, a main floor bathroom, or even a ditch. You want to be in a low-lying place. Um, uh, I was once driving home from uh, some uh, college classes. Um, uh, it was up in the University of Northern Colorado, out in the plains. And uh, I saw a tornado. I was actually driving. I said, that's not what I think it is, is it? I was listening to music on my CD player, or probably tape player in those days. And uh, I, I finally switched over to the actual radio, and they said, yeah, there's twisters out there. And uh, 
Um, I, I, they said to get in a ditch because I was like in the middle of nowhere. And um, I didn't. I kept driving. I was probably stupid. So I should have gotten in a ditch. Um, under a mattress or rigid furniture? Um, don't be in a mobile home or a car. <laughs> That's what Mr. Bergman was. That wasn't very smart, was he? Okay. And, and they say don't try and outrun a tornado in a car. They're so difficult to do. Um, yeah, probably not your best choice. All right. Hey, and I want to end this with just kind of a, a, a clip that kind of explains. It's kind of a review of what I've said, but I think it's good to kind of hear it from, oh, it's, uh, I think it's National Geographic or some outfit that actually knows a lot more about stuff than I do. So let's uh, listen to them. Call them twisters or tornadoes. They're nature's most violent storms with swirling winds that can top 300 miles per hour. About 800 twisters sweep through the U.S. every year, more than anywhere else in the world. The hardest hit area is a swath of the Great Plains from Texas to South Dakota, known as Tornado Alley. Here, warm air flows up from the Gulf of Mexico in the spring and summer and crashes into cold air, pushing down from Canada. The meeting produces violent thunderstorms called supercells. Scientists don't completely understand how or when tornadoes form, but they do know a supercell like this one can produce a twister if the conditions are right. As warm, moist air flows into a storm, it gets pushed up and twisted by upper-level winds. As this rotating column of air gathers force, conditions are ripe for a collision below. When rain-cooled downdrafts get warm air near the ground, a low-hanging revolving cloud forms beneath the cell. A tornado is imminent. Tornadoes don't last long, anywhere from 20 seconds to an hour, but it can take years to recover from the devastation. These storms kill nearly 90 people each year in the U.S. and cause millions of dollars worth of damage. When a tornado is spotted, experts advise going to a basement, staying away from any windows, or climbing into a first-floor bathtub. While most people run for safety when a twister appears, some scientists actually race to beat it. These storm chasers hunt down tornadoes, trying to get right in the twister's path. They encounter incredible cloud movement, torrential rain, severe winds and hail, lightning, breathtaking storm structures. When they finally locate a twister, they measure it using special tools. These scientists hope to someday predict exactly when and where tornadoes will strike. Little can prevent the damage caused by tornadoes, but better forecasting could save more lives, giving survivors the chance to rebuild after living through one of the most violent storms on Earth. Well, that concludes today's podcast. I hope you have learned a lot about severe weather, and we will see you in class. Have a good day. Bye.